Okay, guys, welcome, welcome back to uh, the Marriage Project. Um, in this segment, we're going to be really interactive. So I want you guys to not only ask each other questions, um, but also comment. And we want to make sure that everyone is getting the full um, experience and making sure that everyone is addressing everything they want to address as far as marriage is concerned. Okay, so I am going to kick this off with um, a hard question. So this is going to require everybody to dig deep down back into their memory. Um, one thing that is very important is conflict resolution, okay? And just giving some background, of course, about myself, I was married for 10 years. And I do want to go, I want you guys to go into detail about a time where you were angry and how you, are, you, you all were able to pull each other back in. Forums like this are very important, I believe. Uh, my marriage, which was 10 years old, only lasted 10 years. But had we had forms as such, I believe it may have worked out. Um, so for me, um, ang um, anger, of course, and conflict was a huge thing in our relationships. One of the things that I did do, I could have went to jail, but I ended up throwing a crock pot in the windshield as he was driving oh. away. Okay. We... Oh. Hey. Did not really recover from that, but I do want you guys to give specific <laughs> examples of things that you did or may have said or did, and then how you came back from it. Now, me and my relationship, we didn't come back from, from that. Mm. And that was just the icing of the cake, but I do want you guys to go into detail because sometimes we do things and go through things and uh, we do conflict resolution that may help somebody else. Okay. Oh. You ready? Did you miss? I didn't. Okay. The oh windshield God. was gone. <laughs> and I it it. It. Oh, oh man. <laughs> didn't miss. Sorry, guys. <laughs> so I think this forum is important to help with relationships and how to, you know, once we tackle issues of disagreement and anger and how you de-escalate situations and bring Zen back into the household. Guys, ready? Yes. All right, let's start with uh, Sylvandra and Bernard. <laughs> hey, you gonna you gonna have to speak on that? I made you angry a lot more. Uh, um, um, <clears throat> go ahead. You go first. No, oh, go ahead. I'm just I'm I'm a very aggressive person, so I I try to. My words. <clears throat> he don't use them well. <clears throat> she wanted to tell you something. You know where I had it. I don't. I don't remember me ever really getting mad at her like that. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so let's. So listen, we're gonna start back to the first one. The first one, we're gonna reverse all oh, of it, all the way back. <laughs> so Bernard don't like getting hung up on. Do not hang up the phone on Bernard. If you hang up the phone, he is he is going through the roof, right? So this is like the first time we were going to California. I was meeting his dad for the first time. I don't know what happened, but I didn't have my cell phone. And at this time in Daytona, they still have pay phones. Mm -hmm. I call him from a pay phone. I'm on the phone with him. We're going back and forth about something because I'm aggravated because I need to pack so we can get ready for this flight to California. Like all this stuff, I think I'm anxious because it's going to be the first time I'm meeting his daddy. Like I'm staying in these people's house. I don't know them. So I'm anxious. So we already have like this energy already, right? I'm on his pay phone. Pay phone cuts off on him, right? <laughs> so because it was a pay phone and because my cell phone is dead, I have no way to let him know that, hey, I ain't hang up on you. The phone hung up on you. By the time I get home, he's like pacing, pacing the floor, like about to go through the roof. So he's like, why the fuck would you hang up the phone? Like, I had never seen this person act like this before in my life. And it was because of a phone being hung up. But at that time, that was the first time we ever engaged in in a way where we were both fighting back and forth. Like, I'm in his face like, you, I didn't hang up on you. Like, we don't act like that. But that happened. So it was kind of like, I had to come back to myself and be like, okay, how do we do this? Like, how do we bring this back down? Because right now, we... We on zero, we went from zero to a thousand on something that really wasn't even that serious. But the anger was so real. I had never seen this. This He cussed, 
cussed me out. Like I had never seen anything like this. Right? I didn't call out a name. No, you ain't do that. But I you cussed me. You did a real good cussing. You yeah. cussed real good. <laughs> I just really had to come back and kind of like understand that certain things are certain things trigger certain things with him. So I have to be more careful about how things, even if that's not my intention, sometimes yeah. I have to be more careful <laughs> about the things that I do that may trigger a certain emotion out of him. But at the same time, at the same time, I'm kind of easily, easily triggered in that way, especially when we, 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 we disagreeing and I feel like you misunderstanding me. You know what I mean? I'm, I'm really easily triggered in that way. And I'm, uh, I'm what she would call. I, I guess she would say, "I think I'm always right." He, he always. Right. <laughs> you know and what I mean? If, if she if, would say that. She would go ahead. And <laughs> if you don't agree with what he's saying, obviously you don't agree with him. Right. You can't possibly understand it all. That means you, you completely, missing. you completely miss the whole point if you don't agree with what he's saying. So when it comes to that, you have to kind of figure. I choose my battles. Because he is very passionate. Anything could be like something that just now we fighting for no reason. And I've learned how to how I'm trying to learn. <laughs> I'm learning how to be uh a little less aggressive with my overall, you know, just how I you know disagree. How I disagree. I'm I'm a very uh man in person when I disagree. So, um, I don't know. I hope that's clear. So, are you, like, catching yourself now? Are you, like, saying, let me back up a little bit and not? Me? Yes. Oh, no, nah, not at all. Not at all. I'm really trying to, I'm really trying to, like, because we, I don't, we disagree a lot, but it's, it's not, when we, I, I'm like this, if I'm really mad, like, I'm it's hard to it's hard to say anything to me. I'm being honest. It's hard to say anything to me when I'm mad, and I'm saying that right now. But I ain't gonna say that when we argue. You know what I mean? <laughs> okay. At least you're honest. At least Person. you're honest. So especially with her, she's she's more of a passive person than I am. She really don't like conflict. Don't like conflict. She don't really like confrontation, and I'm extremely confrontational. You know what I mean? So it's it's two different personalities and I'm trying to, you know, just right now, you know, I gotta learn I had to learn how to try to not be as confrontational with her. Yeah, just me. Just with her. Cause she she actually like when I'm confrontational. <laughs> she won't say it, but she like when I'm confrontational, but she can be in the crossfire, you know what I mean? Like you just don't get in this argument at all. Uh, you gonna catch some of these bullets. So you know she can back up from them arguments, but I don't want her to back off. So you know, go ahead. I'm sorry. Okay. All right. All right. Next couple. Uh, oh, we, I think we're like polar <laughs> opposite, but it's still like just as um. Passionate, passionate right we're we're passionately silent sometimes when we disagree um i'm i'm very laid back just by you know just generally i'm just kind of laid back but when i say something to do something to piss her off i mean she's not laid back she's just quiet and she's gonna say anything and but that's, but that's over time so I had to learn how to swallow my words because early on, you remember you said yeah. me, my words were like slicing, like I'm, I'll cut, like oh, it just, oh, she can go. It, it just comes out. And so I had to, because I did not want to slice and dice up my husband, uh, <laughs> I had to learn how to be quiet and sometimes just let things ride. Or sometimes, you know, you just have to think think things through before you try to come back and talk it out because if it's, it's pointless if we're just going to keep attacking each other and instead of working through whatever the issue is so yeah. now we'll we'll i'll get quiet and he'll he knows something is wrong because i know now i'm thinking i tell uh, him like, i'm not being quiet to avoid you a lot of times i'm trying to figure out how am i going to address this because 
I don't want to come at you. And then I'm taking a shot at your manhood. But at the same time, this is bothersome to me and I'm not going to let it ride. So it's a balance, you know, of give and take. Oh, so. so this balance, I have a question. This balance that you speak of. Um, <laughs> so it's something because we're still, okay, in the married game, we're obviously the, the, the rookies here. Um, I have to have... So just in, in, in our relationship dynamic, I think I would be the confrontational one if that was like a thing. And then he would, thank you, Ron. Uh -huh, and then he would be like the shut down one. But when you're dealing with someone who wants the answers right now, and then the other person has completely shut down, mm -hmm. this person becomes more elevated mm -hmm. because now I have no, like now I'm speaking to the wall. So yeah. now what I'm learning is to not talk at you or say things like use your words, which is what we say to our three-year-olds because then those things then switch. Right. So then like the dynamic switches and then he has to remind me that he is not my child or any like a child at all. And then now we we've now drifted from the initial argument so bad that we don't even know what we're arguing about anymore. And I just need a minute and you need a minute. I'm also very emotional. So just like personal background, I don't know if this has anything to do with it because I don't really like read these things, but I'm a Scorpio Latin black woman. Okay. So <laughs> everything that's wrong with that is what <laughs> this man has to deal with on a regular basis. So he now is, he's either waiting for me to just give him the go ahead to answer or he wants me to shut up so bad because he doesn't want to race. He doesn't want to get nasty or like aggressive with me because I think then that it's going to take him longer to pull back as the man. It's just going to take him a little, if he has to swole up now, we're going to have another set of problems. So I don't really know. We haven't really, I think our balance that we found is we just need to take a pause. You go over there. I go over here and we have to now reconvene when we're calmer. Because, like, to your point, Michelle, like, trying to have the conversation when emotions are elevated, you get, like, no. it's just white noise at that point. And right. I'll say, we learned from therapy, like, in all honesty, we didn't go through marriage counseling before we got married. Oh, we did. <laughs> we didn't. Like, <laughs> we didn't we, I mean, we had our baby at Cookman. I was pregnant at Cookman. So, uh, but we were parenting while trying to learn yeah. how to be a couple. And it right. wasn't until we did marriage counseling probably, what, six, five, seven, six, six years ago, five, yeah. six years ago, we had, we went through marriage counseling and we learned what well, I was, I learned in marriage counseling that I was uh, slicing him up with my words and attacking him. And he is very calm and, non-confrontational but when he goes there he goes there it's like zero to 100 mm -hmm. and so that's why i put my knees to him because that was what our marriage counselor told us to um hold hands and connect and touch in some way because we will be trying to talk mm -hmm. and disagree across the room or i'm over here you over here and i'm talking to you but when we touch in some way and look at each other it came out softer for me idea. Which we're, we're gonna try. No, it's it really. Gonna try it. Look, we're gonna try it. We're gonna it try it. To... And you have to look at the person because it's harder to look at them and be connected and touching and, and say something yeah. angrily yeah. or chop them down. Well, that's good. See, we didn't learn that in marriage counseling. We went through marriage counseling with our through our church, mm -hmm. which was like the six week thing, yeah. and we had the whole workbooks and like the courses, and there were some good tools that we tried to like. Remember chapter three, <laughs> like, remember, you're supposed to speak uplifting words to me, mm -hmm. even while I'm doing this. Like, it just, it just doesn't, like, it was helpful for memory, but in, 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 in the moment, like, practicality, it just went out the window. So, and to your point, we also were parents first throughout the process. I think all of us were. So yeah. that's a whole nother. We already had two kids. Yeah, like you know, now like I can't now I can't even turn up how I want to because the kid is asleep. Yeah. So now it's the whole nother that, like. But that helps also. Right? Yeah, and, uh, it helps bring us back. Another part that she's talking about that that separating part. I don't. It might work 
but the longer you separate, the more you just talking to yourself. You're not talking to each other. You're talking to yourself about what I could have said. Mm -hmm. I'm right. So there's nobody there to tell you you're wrong. You're talking to yourself. Saying, hyping yourself up. Right. You're hyping yourself right. up. I'm right. He's wrong. We're away. There's nobody there to interject. And the whole thing about, like, in our midst of, if we do have a discussion that becomes an argument, I like to cut you off. If you said yeah. something in that moment that I felt was wrong, I'm gonna cut. You, I'm gonna cut you off, and I'm gonna explain myself because if we don't get, because if I let you, like right now, <laughs> if I let you, <laughs> if I let you go ahead, you keep going. You put more on on top of what you're saying to to the point that you feel that you're correct the whole way through. But I don't think it's it's not. Tell me what I say when you cut me off. Let me finish my thought. Let me finish what I'm saying. But there's parts uh -huh. of it. have a complete thought okay. before you just like, eh, and what? then now, go ahead. No, go ahead. Tag your it. Go. Okay. So the holding hands and looking in each other's <laughs> eyes, we're going to use that because I think, I that, think that's helpful. That, that, yeah. that really yeah. helps. So, I, no, but <laughs> you have to talk it out. Like, don't, not going to sleep. We're not going to sleep right now. Obviously, we're not going to sleep. We're upset. But, Sleeping on the couch, that's not going to work. Leaving. Leaving, that's that's never going to work. Right. Or, or threatening to leave. Yeah. That, that, we don't get to that part. Well, I mean, because I, I've had a moment where I'm like, I'm grabbing keys and I'm going to my mama's house. I can't. What, why? Like, yes. why are you going somewhere removed? And then that's going to add more fuel to the fire. Mm -hmm. So keeping things internal. And then I think the whole idea about going to sleep mad. So I think it's really, you don't go to sleep angry but i don't think all the time you go to sleep resolved i do yeah. think that the next morning there's like a part two of so where are we really yeah. because at some point you're gonna go to sleep yeah, like same. at some point somebody's gonna go somebody's gonna be like i'm i'm spent but i think that's what we kind of need to like get out of saying like don't go to sleep mad it's really just don't go to sleep like super angry mm -hmm. and then maybe let's let's agree to resolve because you might still go to sleep and feel a little distant or feel that wind go down the middle of you in the bed. Like, you know, I think that's the more realistic thing. I think you but said something. Not, like, we, like, we're totally fine with our I think you said something interesting, too, um, when you said about involving other people in your business. That is, like, a huge, uh, I would say, is a no-go. I, I think it's important to have one person that you may confide in because you, we all need that outside source to talk to every now and again. That's just my personal belief. I don't know if y'all think that too, but, um, um, but right. Somebody who's going to be neutral and give you sound advice. You don't want to call somebody like me who will be like, let's go do something crazy. You know, you want to call somebody who has some sense, who can talk you off the ledge, who has the, um, who has your marriage. Huh? I see. Well, okay. Gwen, like, sorry. We like, Risha said, like, they can't be single. Gwen is divorced. That's, that's, that's... So she would have she, some type of... No, she has experience, but not no side. What do you call me? Don't call Gwen. Hey, don't, don't call me. <laughs> <laughs> the advice is going to be all bad. Um, but I mean someone who you know has very sound judgment, who who has your marriage in their best interest. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, somebody yeah. who's going to, you know, who both of you know. Both of you know. Yeah. Um... And, and just somebody who's going to talk to you and let you vent. Because a lot of times, it's just a matter of you getting it off of your chest and having someone to give you a sound solution. Yeah. yeah. To say, you. no, you were wrong. You need to go back and apologize. You have, your, you have your person that you confide in. And that's where that should stop. Period. And we've dealt with couples outside that either are close to us or <laughs> friends. So the, the first piece of advice that I give to every couple that we've talked to is I say, keep your family out of your business. Keep your friend mm -hmm. out of your business. Out. Out. So yes. What's going to happen is we done fought. <laughs> you, told, yeah. you told your mom. I told my mom. I told my daddy. They mad at her. Her family mad at me. We done made up. <laughs> they still mad. Yeah. Exactly. And they're going to be telling you, you need to leave and you need to do this. And it's none of their business. Yeah. And it's just like, it's no go. And I, t I mean, that's, that is like, <coughs> is keep your family. I, your mom don't need, you know, y'all just had an argument, your sisters, whatever, but you, 
it's good to have that one sounding board, and that's I think that's what's what's key. And hopefully that sounding board is your is your partner sometimes yeah. because uh, most of the times when you fight, it's a disagreement. That means y'all just missed on something. That's all yeah. that means. You just missed. It doesn't mean that you necessarily did something wrong. You yeah. just did something that she thought that you know was wrong. And that's okay. Like you have disagreements and you just got to find a way to talk through them and communicate. Early on, I think our, my expectation was based on how I was brought up, my upbringing. So I expected him to do and move as if I was doing it or this is what, you know, my, my family did it this way. What's up? What's going on? My daddy was like this. Why are you not doing what my dad did? And so we had to figure out um, a common ground as far as my expectations for you cannot be what I wanted for my mom or what I got at home. And my we're a whole different house. We're building something different and we take the best of those and put it together. But um, early on, so y'all are very, very new, recent Tiff. And it, I mean, we went through having to figure us out early on a lot because my expectations and his expectations were not for each other was more of how we were brought up. Okay. But we had to realize, okay, we're doing a whole new thing. Like our parents' marriages didn't even work. So. <laughs> I think, I think the whole expectation thing, I know I came into this, even while we were dating very, you know, and anybody like Von Von probably test. I'm very much like my daddy did this. My daddy did that. My dad did it like this. My dad had a wife and two daughters and would open every door of the car and then put himself in the car like these are just things that i was very much used to and he's from we while we were dating he would be like i'm not your daddy like he would say which would make me angry because i'm like i still open the door no i mean no he'll open the door right like he'll 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 be like she'll like just he has he was raised like a gentleman but just in the in the day-to-day things and where I would either make a mention or make some type of like, you know, inference like, well, my dad did things like this, bro, I'm not your daddy. And then me having to turn down what may be like some kind of like, how dare you disrespect, like, you know, like getting ready to, now we have a fight because he's just simply saying, I am my own man. You are my wife. I, I'm not your father. I'm your husband. Like there's things that are different in that dynamic, but those are like the expectation I think was just kind of like, well, my house is gonna, and to your point, my parents are not, to, to, to not they're not together. So obviously there was something there that didn't work. But, you know, as I still have that, you know, and I'll just, this might take us into another topic, but he, part of our, our arguments become, I still feel like you're O's daughter and then Reese's wife. And these have been like last six months kind of conversations um so like you know again like we're obviously we're the we're new to this but i just i don't know if this is just because the the baggage that i come with and not to just spray my entire family my dad has ms my dad is not 100 percent physically well my mom and my sister just moved back from charlotte so a lot of that day-to-day stuff was on me and then it directly affected our house um so he would feel on the back burner for my dad, which it's my dad. So there's just the, like, there's that, there, those are things that him and I are trying to work through like real time, like real life, um, you know, moments. And we can wrap that up into like, it's also a cultural thing. My dad is Cuban. We're very much in each other's space. We're very much group text and all this stuff. And he's just not, he, that he doesn't come from that. So he's like, you guys talk entirely too much. It's creepy weird. Like, <laughs> like, <laughs> like your mama, your sister, you, your daddy, like all know what's going on. Like who went to the bathroom, who's eating what today? Like it's just, it's, it's off putting for someone who's been in this family now seven years. But these are, you know, any tips and tricks on how to work through or has anybody else kind of gone through that kind of dynamic Tim's family is Caribbean, you know, Jamaican and and Antiguan. And Antiguan yeah. So Oh, he's Antiguan. Y'all different. When we it's different. When we anytime, you know, like I would have holidays, it's everybody. You know, like 
I'm not used to that. I'm not used to everybody being so involved and everybody being in one room. It's, and it's a village. The, the group chat <laughs> and, you know, the drop and buy and announce or, you know, pop up or, you know, somebody needs somewhere to stay or something like that. Like all of that, I wasn't with. And we had a, we had a moment like with, within our marriage where I think that you had to come to terms with, mm-hmm. okay, I have to put my family first. This is my family, but this is my immediate family. And this is my, this, these people, me, TJ and Eden, take priority, you know, and take precedence over your mom or your dad or, you know, what their needs are because we have needs as well. And when we first got married, his mom came to, to live with us and she stayed with us about two months and it brought strife between me and I because I felt like, you know, we were newlyweds. You know, I just had a baby. It's like I don't want, <laughs> I don't want to share my space. I don't want to have to accommodate. I don't want to do none of that because you and I just got married, and so it brought we bumped heads about that. And he, um, it it took a while. It's like just recently he's starting to understand um, that boundaries have to be made. You know, with family. And, uh, you know, we, you, we accommodate if we can, but if it's not necessary and, you know, you're just leaning on family because family is there, um, I had a problem with that because for me, that, in, that, in, that never happened. Like, we never had family that needed to come and stay. We never had um, gather, family gatherings where my entire family was in my home. You know, if that was happening, that was a family reunion and, you know, everybody. Once a year. <laughs> right, but in my house, like on a weekly basis, like that was that was nothing for you to go to your grandmother's house and everybody over there. And for me, yes, you know. no, <laughs> yeah. no, me. because my husband will open his doors to anyone. <laughs> <laughs> that's just, I'm learning, that's learning, that's learning on that process. Like, yeah, I'm learning on that. Like, you go to Jacksonville and you meet my uncle. I told y'all, like my uncle is. You know what I mean? He's seven years older than me, but that's my brother, but my, my biggest role model. Y'all go to anybody in my family house, you come here. You know what I mean? Like, we, it's always something going on at my house. In college, even in college, we had two separate apartments. People ain't know it because she was always at mine. <laughs> but, you know what I mean? Anybody who really knew to come to my people apartment, I stayed in the harbor. People just you know what I mean? In my people, yeah. people Talking, I'm talking about people. Random people from Cookman are just walking in the house. Like, like who are crazy. you? Like, why you know what I mean? Here? Like, <laughs> still like that. So to this day, I'm not. I mean, no, I'm, I'm no, I'm nowhere near like that. Not like nowadays. She got more friends. She just made a comment the other day. So our goal, we want a state property, right? Like we want all this property. Bernard's great idea is that we should build an apartment complex on our property, so if any of his family wants to live there. <laughs> hey, wait, 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 she said live there. Live she keeps saying live there. She keeps saying live there. Okay, so she what else would you do? You have an apartment on our property. property. <laughs> oh, 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 oh. If the pro- Listen, if the property is big enough, you can stay on the other side of some other shit and not see me. But it's my property. You understand? I know, but, it, but see, the whole thing is, it's your property, but they rent it out. Yeah. Are they? Are they? Are you sending it to them or something? Buy house somewhere else and pay listen, there. man, I'm I talking forty listen. acres. Listen, I don't know. Listen, that's that's neither here nor there. Either way it goes, <laughs> this is just the way that I do things. I like to have community around. Mm. You know what I mean? But it's it's for the simple. It, it's it's for the fact that I was raised by a community of people, mm-hmm. and I know how it is to not have community. Now, since we've been up here in Atlanta, to be honest yeah. with you, yeah. We have not had that. So my children have had to kind of suffer. When, when we moved, they haven't had to say, you know, the consistent friends. When we was younger, you might have had consistent friends that you grew up with all your life. Yeah. You know what I mean? They didn't have that. And I'm really into, if we, not, if we don't have that, then let's build that. You know what I mean? And if, if that takes me, if I got money and I got access to have property, let's bring some of these people from Jackson, Jacksonville up here so they can see a better side of life and actually see that it's something different. That's the way that we do stuff. That's the way I do things. Mama is like, 
I'm gonna show you a good time when you're here because I am very, very. She, she, good. Wanna, she like to entertain okay, you when you're here. Entertain you she will entertain here, you when you're here. I don't want you to stay. I, I just, I don't I want you. you. And, and, and I'm just like, look, bro, come get, come get some of this good life. Mm -mm, we no, 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 you no. know. <laughs> That's just how. I, am. But I, I think it's, I think it's a little well because this is his family's Caribbean. They're from Antigua, like 100. percent My family's Cuban and. American, like my mom's family from Savannah. So when he came into this, it was the Cubans, all touchy feely, kissy kissy, and then you know my grandma and aunties them like just all in his mix. It's just relatively just him and his mom, and he has a brother that's older, but that's it. So for him, it's like I think that's where most of our our issues come from because he's used to being a party of two, like a self-contained, just, you know, small unit. Yeah, when I came into this, <laughs> <laughs> I loved it. Like, it was, like, like I said, when we got together, it was funerals. Our family reunions were funerals. That's the only time we got to see each other. And I hated that. We didn't have this big, like, they have a lot of family. I love that family. Like, that's what I really want to do, like, have sit at the table and have, like, a bunch of family members all wow. the way up. Yeah, down the table. But we're gonna like. I loved it. That's what. That's one of the reasons we got together. One of my reasons why I stayed, because I saw was that. my family, which I'm sure for some people. Well, now, like if we knew that, we know now he probably wouldn't. Have. But you know, um, yeah. I just you know I I I think that now we're just trying to find what what that balance is and 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 i my concern is i never want his mom to feel like because there's less of them volume wise that they don't get the same amount of press time as my family because my family can be very overwhelming and it yeah. can be always about like this gonzalez bolton like let's do this and i always want to give his mom and his aunts and his cousins the same you know time to shine especially for you know for harper for our daughter i don't i think that she needs to know and have a, a, a familiar sense of like you know when she's old enough his mom will probably take her to carnival and she'll be down you know you know like that those are things that i want her to experience but he's just gonna have to i never want to overstep him so if he's a little uncomfortable about it then i just follow his lead i'm never gonna go over his head with his family and i I want to say something too as well, um, and I'll put this disclaimer out there because I don't want to throw my parents under the bus of how they raised us or whatever they dealt with if they ever see this. But um, yeah, and Brittany <laughs> talks about this. She says, you know, we're you know we're a big family, so our uh, family trips, um, even anniversaries, my family would celebrate. It included the grandparents, the parents, everybody, the cousins, you name it. That it was a meeting house at my grandparents' house, my parents' house. That was it. That was family. The, the nucleus of the family was everybody, like mm -hmm. 20 of us all at one place, one, one, one place at the same time. So uh, I think this has ground, grounded me that being in uh, with, you know, my immediate family here, understanding the dynamics of taking care of them, uh, closing myself off. There's sometimes I go missing and my family get upset. Like I just, I go blank. I say, you know, hey, I'm cutting my phone off or I don't answer Facebook. I stop. Going, you know, I, I limit my access on Facebook, all the social medias, because I'm just trying to be with my immediate family. And it's that serious with Caribbean families. Like, they're knocking at your doorstep like, oh, what's going on? We're here in the area. How are you in the area? You live eight hours away. <laughs> but, yeah, it's just a matter of having those serious conversations. And, and if any of you had that, like, dealing with your mother being, you know, uh, on the couch or, you know, when we're in our townhouse and my wife just having a baby, and dealing with that dynamics of, you know, them bumping heads um, in a household like that. There's times where we, you know, got into it because of that. Like you, you, you put me against my mother. This is my mother now. And I had to like have a come to Jesus with that and say, you know, you come first. You know, you're my wife. Mom, she come first. And those what kind of, yeah. What right. Kind right. Of, so with everybody else in the family, has any has anything happened as far as. When it comes to in-laws, family, you know what I mean? Family ties, anything like that, you know, let's get into the thick of it, baby. You know, let, has anything like that really affected marriages? And how do you deal with 
how do you deal with that and um you know what I'm saying still keep your marriage intact? Anybody? We you know what? I I'll say this because I think I'm I think we're pretty fortunate that as far as the in-laws go, I love her mother. So I don't she want the fortunate couples then. <laughs> but, no, but, but, but but no, what 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 I <laughs> No, I say that go ahead. No, I say that because like it hasn't like you have to I think there were some moments where it could have went a different way. Mm-hmm. And I think early on we like set the set the course straight. And I think that's what's important is that early on, like you set it straight, you know, what it is. It's us first. You see my face. No, but and that's what I'm saying. Like we had moments where like he, I, just, he was he a said, he is a twin with three sisters. He's the only boy. And Ooh. so the only son. And so when we got married, I am the only girl with three brothers. So wow. Steven mama was like, this is my son. Like she used to him being able to come over, seeing him all the time right there in Orlando. He cut the grass, go check on mama, you know, all of the son stuff. But now you got a house and you got this grass to cut. So you can't go cut both grasses and be there. And so it became at one point, his mom kind of felt some type of way. Like he wasn't, he don't check on me no more. I used to talk to him every week. I now it's been two weeks. What's going on? And then it was like, Michelle, you holding him, you, you keeping him away from your, your son know how to pick up his phone and call you. He ain't called. Then you get on him. But he is being a husband. He's trying to be a man. Like, he can't run two households. We had to have that conversation at one point. I had to tell him because it's not my place to go and tell your mother, mama, you, you, you pushing it. You about to overstep because you can't, you can't, he can't run two households effectively. But he did have that conversation. She wasn't, I remember at one, one time where she was like in her feelings, and told his sister and all, you know, whatever, but she got over it. And then now ever since, I mean, anytime something comes up, she's like, that's y'all house. That's y'all marriage. You know, I, I just let y'all do what y'all, you know? So I think it had to be set straight early on. So yeah. we don't have those issues. And my mom will overstep because she just, she's like, used to come in. I'm coming over. I'm, can I come? Can I bring? And I'd be like, look now, I need you to hold on, but, chill out. But that's not me. Like, <laughs> I don't mind. I, I do. She be she on the mind it. Yeah. I don't. I don't. I don't, I don't <laughs> Absolutely. I, I, I'm a hundred percent. Listen, because her mom bring food. She bring all kind of stuff. I'll be like, take that shit back. I don't want to <laughs> go. <laughs> we no, got we, boxes we, and stuff now. She always bringing stuff. I'm like, no, I can't. I don't want to have to go through nothing else. Take it back, and I'll come to your house and get it when I want it. I wish. I wish her mama. I guess my mom died. So you know what I mean. But my. I think my mom would be the one that's she on was. her damn nerve she right was. now. You know what I mean? Like my mom would be the one that's in her, in her like in her face about shit. But you know, she's not just politely and gently sweet, but aggravating the shit. But you know, <laughs> my mom cook me some fucking food, man. That, that would be great. <laughs> I can't. I can't. I don't know if I can have a stay. Yeah, that close. Is, I love you, Ma. Our I promise family you. has those kind of boundaries. Mm-hmm. We don't just, we ain't just popping up at your house. That's why we, we moved away. To be honest, <laughs> like we that's don't, why we moved that's away. That's not how we do stuff anyway. So I'm yeah. not concerned that I would have those issues because my family don't work that way. We ain't just at each other's house like that. Like that's just not how it goes. Down. My, I mean, to be honest with you, you know, I I want my family from Jacksonville to be up here because you know. That's just a fun bunch. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like it's, it's just a fun bunch to be around. I'll be over their house, they'll be over my house, shit like that. But no, nah, it's it's we had to move we had to move away, bro. Yeah. To be able to create our own yeah, dynamic, we we've always away. it's just when we met, we've always had the opportunity to just be about us. We created what we wanted. It was the first time for me that I was ever able to do that. Once I experienced that one time, nobody was going to tell me what I'm doing, how I'm doing it, nothing. And we found that the only way I can do that is if I live on my own terms. Boundaries. Who are you that? <laughs> one thing I kind of figured out what works for us is we have become the, the host house people 
which lets us control the whens and the whos and the it's so. Just, control that don't work with us. We <laughs> hold house, but I don't. But the control goes out the window because we. Well, no, house. because okay. So someone told us this a while ago. My friend told us like, I'm not gonna go far. I'm not gonna go far to be uncomfortable. That includes family. That includes. Oh, I think it was during marriage counseling too. They were like, you guys don't always have to go to everything. You don't have to always feel obligated to show up to every family event, every oh, birthday you. party, every wedding, every even you know a funeral. If it's like an extended so and so, you don't have to go. I think they were like send flowers. So he took that and ran with it. He was like, "Then yeah. so we send flowers to everything. We're not we're like birthday parties. We ain't gotta go. Send flowers. Wed weddings. We gotta go. Send flowers. But in my mind, I always want to." show up for people yeah but now i have to like to everybody else's point i have to show up for the people in this house first and i can't like rush our day or or cancel a ballet practice or move the schedule around to accommodate other people when they could care like oh you came great thanks like they have no concept of what it took to get me here or the pouty husband i left at home who's upset that i even came in the first place like I think now boundaries has been like a, a along with like a, the budget word, like these are B words that I'm studying, mm. especially with, you know, to, with my dad, my dad was good for, my dad was 45 minutes away from us in South Miami and random time of day. It's knock, 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 knock on the door. No call ahead. No, Hey, Tip, I'm in the neighborhood. I want to see Harper. Hey dad, I'm at work. Reese is sleeping. The child's not even, she's a school, like, you You called and showed up unannounced, and now it makes my husband feel like, like, your daddy just had, like, because his mom will, we have to ask her to come over here. She will not take it upon herself, just be like, I'm in, I'm in the neighborhood, I'm going to come by. My family doesn't have that kind of restraint, so it's up to me to say, hey, guys, this is what I would appreciate it if during the times of this time and that time, like this is what's happening in my house so that it doesn't continue to disrupt like what we have going on. And, and it, it was a little uncomfortable for me to go to not so much my mom, because I think like Steven said, he, he called my mom over here or he'll be at my mom's house. And I'm like, we, less of her, <laughs> like more, <laughs> more of everybody else. But I think, I think the issue with my dad, we went to him why you, why you, why you felt, like the whole dad thing was um so like what what you talking about my dad like the last time we got into so valentine's day my dad was mother mother's day my dad bought me flowers too to acknowledge that his daughter is a mother my dad just so happened to come here friday so i got my flowers from my dad friday he felt totally violated oh now I got to do all this extra stuff. Maybe not that big. But like, oh, I got to do all this extra stuff because your <laughs> daddy came in here and gave you flowers. Like, it's gonna, he's trying to take what I'm doing away from you. Like, it was a whole moment. It was, if you understand, like, in the moment, like, like, again, back burner, dad, daughter, and then husband, wife. It felt like, again, I was pushed down at another level. But I didn't do that. You didn't. I didn't say you let it happen. You didn't do it. It's just like, how do you tell your father? Because I have a daughter, so right. I have to put myself in that in that in those shoes right. later on. So I can't come to him like, because I nobody gonna step to me about my daughter. Right. So anything that comes right. out of his mouth, I have to respect because I'm gonna say the same thing later right. down the road. But okay. right now, it's my wife. So you gotta not meet me halfway. You gotta step back twenty. Cause I'm, I need 80 out of my wife. So it's kind of hard. Like you can't talk to my mom any kind of way. Cause you wouldn't, Which I wouldn't like you wouldn't, I can't come to your father any kind of way. Which he would. They're, they're just parents. We keep off. We keep, we keep the parent discussion out of, because I, I'm pretty sure we both know what we could say to the other in regards to our parents that would just make it a catastrophe. So we're very careful to not, go there and to still be respectful when when parents do come up i try to think of it as if they were sitting right here like would would i be okay saying this if his mom was sitting right here so that's where i kind of try to keep it because uh, i think 
Thank you. Yeah, because other than that, you know, I don't think I don't think. Do it's you easy. do you do you not say everything you want to say, or do you find a way to no, say? No, Want to say? No, you I don't say everything I want to say because everything I want to say may not be nice. I was gonna say it's how you say. It's not what you say. Sometimes exactly. All of the thoughts off of your chest, but say them in a different way, or do you just not get all of the thoughts off of your chest? Because I think that that's very important to be you able said, to you get. Said, you said everything you wanted to say regarding. In the moment, I've worded it better. Yeah. To the to not even protect your father, but to protect you, because it's a sensitive subject off the rip. So me coming at you sideways about something that you didn't even have nothing to do with. I just put it in a different... Yeah, he'll spin it different. I put it in a different box. But as long as it's said, it's said. make sure, yeah. it make said. sure that it's said it's because it's it'll fester. Fun. Yeah. It's going to come up at the wrong time with the minimal, the littlest thing could just trigger something. So that's, okay, I have to say this. And, if, and whenever his mom watches this, I, I'm like, like... So his mom has, she makes, she'll make food. And she'll say, either if I'm coming home from work, or she's like, or he'll tell me, like, hey, go buy mom's. She has food. Well, like, perfect example, I wasn't feeling well. My grandmother, who's 93, sent literally a pot of soup for the entire family. Because that's just what, like, if you send a food, you send a food for everybody. His mom, I'll go by to pick up food. It's one plate. <laughs> <laughs> it's for so you. It's just, and, and, and it's just, it is like a constant, like, he said he's spoken to her about it. I have, I it's have. for and you. She thing. made it for him. <laughs> but okay, it's not just him. Yeah, and I told her that. That's right. not. That's I, I wouldn't. Yeah. I don't know why. I don't. He knows why because the African who's so he's not the only child, but he is what his mom calls her. What did she say? Love her love child. Yes. Okay. So this is like there's a halo constantly up here. That's so when it. she's sending her love child, who? <laughs> But her love child got a wife and his own love child, and we like ain't got no rights. You know what I'm saying? Like there's there's nothing for us. But she okay. So sometimes she feels like it's island food, and you don't like island food. How like would that. she know? That's what I, that, I didn't say it was right. I'm oh. just saying that's what I feel is her judge is her reasoning behind it. Mm -hmm. But I I like I I've come to her and I said, Mom, <laughs> like it's two. It's like three of us in this house. Harper can eat mine, but. Tiff, like, you say something's there, but I'm like, Mom. <laughs> oh, gosh. Hold on, Brittany. You was about to say something, right? I saw you talking. For oh, a minute, but, but. Um, she had him really young, so they grew up together. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, like, sometimes I be having to say, listen, that's not your wife. I'm your wife. And I want her to realize you're not her husband. You're not the dad. Because sometimes he has to take on dad roles for his siblings. You know, like she'll call was him. Like a single, where your mom was like a single mom? Well, okay. early on. Okay. She early got on. married early. When, yeah. when I was 13 or 12. Yeah. Yeah. But that, that closeness is still there. She still yeah. will seek advice from him or, you know, like, like he's her confidant. And it rubbed me the wrong way. Of course, you know, because I'm his wife. So, of course, it's like, I'm not going to be in competition with your mom, you know. So, that was that was the issue for us. It's not anymore, but it was for a long time because I always felt like in, in that regard, she was overstepping, um, you know, calling for, you know, what should I do about your brother? <laughs> what would you call his daddy? <laughs> like, because... He's not, so he can't help. Yeah. <laughs> you know, like he can't give brother, uh, you know, big brother advice or things like that. But they used to like lean on him for like parenting, and mm -hmm. I wasn't okay with that. But that, that that's what that's what I used to deal with. I think that now we've established those boundaries, and they get it now. And I don't know. But was it not. because you said something, or because Tim was like, "Hang no, on, I, I, I harp on him." And I never would approach his, you know, his family. I had to do that once with his uncle. But with his mom, I always wanted it to be him. You know, I'm just like, it's, you got to tell her. I'm not going to tell her. Because if I tell her, I'm definitely going to be rude about it. Not yeah. intentionally. But because, you know, like I'm fed up, you know, like 
I'm, you know, emotional about it already. So, of course, I'm, it's probably not going to come off. Or either that or I'm not going to be able to say what I really want to say. Mm -hmm. So I always tell him how I feel, and I expect for it to be relayed, you know, yeah. to his <laughs> family. And, and most of the time it is relayed, mm -hmm. but it's, most not, it's difficult. <laughs> that's, that's my mother. So yeah, um, yeah, yeah. I'm put into a compromising position in that all the time. And I, I'm just learning, again, how to um, – again, I'm not – you can't make everybody happy in this process, but my job right now is to make sure that my wife is happy. So, um, I, if, but again, my, that's still my mother. My so mama. Um, <laughs> I do all that I can to make sure I get her to a level that she understands that, hey, my wife does come first. And that's, that's been a big obstacle, but you know, every day I'm growing in that. I'm still growing because you know, next week it could change at Thanksgiving or Christmas. So yeah, yeah I could be telling y'all something. So, um, <laughs> Again, it's a, it's, a, it's a learning experience. I had a question. Brittany, mm -hmm. so hearing you say that, it made me remember, we've been there. Do you feel, are you happy that Tim relays the message? Or does it bother you that he wasn't bothered before you had to tell him to relay the message? Yeah, because for me, it's, it should be, you know, without question. That, you know, mom, no, you can't do this X, Y, and Z. This isn't appropriate. You know, those types of things. But it doesn't, he's, he, you're a people pleaser. And when it comes to like authority, like your mom, your dad, people you deem or people you respect, you don't want to do anything to burn that bridge. Even if it is your mom, you know, like with your uncle, with that situation, his uncle, um, moved to Atlanta and moving from Texas before he moved here because he was coming out here and he invited me to breakfast one day and was like, did Tim tell you that I was going to be coming to stay with y'all? And I was like, wait, what? And no, <laughs> no, he didn't. Yeah, yeah. But I, I, held, I held my composure and I was just like, well, no, we didn't talk about that, but we will. And as soon as I left, you know, I called him, what is this about? What is this? And he kind of just went with it. And it came to a point where I just had to, you know, say something to his uncle, you know, like, it's inappropriate that you're here when he's not here. I don't know you like that. I know that that's your uncle, but I don't know him like that, you know, and I was pregnant and I had, you know, a small child. So I'm, I was always thinking of them and thinking of my, you know, being, thinking of my discomfort. And I don't like being uncomfortable in my house. And I, I like <laughs> I want to walk around however I want to. I want to be able to do what I want in my house and not, you know, have to um, stifle myself because mm -hmm. I have a game. Oh, and, right. yeah, and that was the things that made me comfortable in my house were the things that made her comfortable. Mm -hmm. that, was just, that was just something. That was just a difference between me and her. You know what I mean? I enjoy people around and, you know what I mean, having... Uh, and, and even in my private times when I'm just chilling and want to just chill, I like having people around. I like being able to spar when it comes to having conversation. That's just me. It put me, it, I'm comfortable that way. She, listen, like, she don't want people in her house. Everybody because. will be in her house. And it, the tension will be thick. I'm talking about. It. Because Bernard is going crazy. <laughs> even though he knows the tension is thick. He gonna still entertain these folks. But see, that's a that's a little okay. <laughs> I, I got resting bitch face. Yeah, like <laughs> point. I if I'm uncomfortable because this is the thing, it's I, a I, 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 take because I will very much so accommodate. But after the accommodations are over. And, okay, so <laughs> what I said is see, she know how I do things and she she know me. If we're accommodating right now. We don't know. All night. We don't know when it's going to end. It might go the whole weekend. You did? No, no. Come on, man. Don't do that. <laughs> it ain't going to be the whole weekend. Sunday at 3, they leave. But you know <laughs> Because we got, to do, we got to do shit on Monday. But, but it's only... Monday. <laughs> it's still Sunday at 3. And she know how I <laughs> put it. All right. We got a lot of content with these couples, but y'all got to subscribe to get that later. In the meantime, so we're going to switch gears one more time.
Okay, so this next thing we're going to do is a bit of an exercise. Um, I want all the couples to just kind of look into the eyes of your spouse. Don't be shy. I'm sure they won't bite just yet. Um, and I want, I want the men to start first. And the one thing that I want you guys to do is tell your wives what they are doing that is really good, that's really exceptional. And I want you guys to really look into each other's eyes and tell each other what you're doing. That's great. Repeat that. He wasn't listening. <laughs> Tell your wife one by one what she's doing that is absolutely exceptional. <laughs> you guys ready? So we'll start with the uh with Vaughn and Brenard. Mm -hmm. What is she doing, right? Exceptional. What is she doing that is exceptional? Okay, so let me tell you something. Let me tell you something. Like I always, like I say, I got, I got a million different things I'm trying to do at one time. Mm -hmm. And she has effectively taken up the role of COO in, in pretty much. No, no, no. I want you to talk okay. to her. I want Sweet. you to look at her eyes and I want you to okay. tell her what she's doing so good. I think you've been like a, you, you've been incredibly patient with the whole process of everything that's going on. She, you've been uh, kind of you've been a great wingman when it comes to all of the stuff that I'm doing. Um, even when I'm tired, you still push me to do um, everything that I'm that I'm trying to do, and you make every vision that I. <coughs> Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know how to feel about that. No, <laughs> no I, like you're very, you're very patient, and I know I'm, I know I'm, I'm aggressive, mm -hmm. I'm mm -hmm. and um, you know you've been you've been patient with me. You've been uh, you've been been very very good with that. You have never been lost for work. And you see, <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay, all right. Next, <laughs> don't everybody yeah. volunteer at once? Oh, I got it, I got it. <laughs> Michelle, um, you absolutely kick ass at life and kick ass at being a mother oh. and a wife. False, right. um. I adore the way you deal with me. Come on, adore. And my food. Yes. And, my, and, and me being the guy that I am, I, I can be, you know, a, to me. a jokester. To me. I know. Look in her eyes. But, you know, you know. Um, my wife, she is a, a real ride or die, and she knows that. Um, she has stuck with me through ups and downs, job loss, like screw ups, like all that stuff. And I am. I, I could not have chosen better. And okay. um, I just thank you. Man, can I do one of those? <laughs> <laughs> no. Go ahead, cuz. Do it over. This I didn't mean work. to put no pressure on y'all boys, man. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> you don't put the pressure. The pressure is on. <laughs> no, y'all, who next? We're, we're, we can go. Okay. I got to look at you now. <laughs> 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 we made it. Oh, my oh, my thing. <laughs> um, Brittany, you, you know that you are the rock of this family. Um, without you, this I don't know how we function, how we move, how we do anything, but um, you hold us together. Um, everything about you, uh, your creativity, um, your, your humbleness, your willing to listen and um, your constructive criticism, the way, you're, the way you're growing and we're growing together, um, it's because um, you know, I know we're supposed to be together. I know God placed you in my life. And I just hope um, that I could be the best husband for you. Um, and, uh, you know, again, I just appreciate everything that you do. Uh, you go above and beyond for this family. You put your, your life on hold every day uh, for us. And um, words can't express how much we appreciate you here, how much I appreciate you here. And I love you. Oh. Oh. <laughs> okay, TRG group. <laughs> <laughs> Sweetheart, first off, I want to thank you for like starting this family. She gonna cry. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> she gonna cry in the car. 
Um, for real, but like, I adore everything that you do for us. Like, you put us first. You are the glue to this whole family. Like I tell you all the time, you're the matriarch of what we're starting. Um, there's a saying like, "I'm the head, but you're the neck." You do steer us in the right direction. Um, you've opened me up more and made me a better man as far as a husband, as a father. Are you gonna cry? Nah. Are you gonna cry? <laughs> <laughs> it's just, okay. it's, it's, um, Ooh. you are, you made me better, basically. Like, I was great alone, but you've made me like the best man I've ever been. And that goes for as a husband, as a friend, as a father, as a person, like I wouldn't be on here if I wasn't for you. <laughs> <laughs> okay, ladies. That was good. That was it's good. It's your turn. It's your turn. Let's hear it. I want you to talk to these fellas and I want y'all to pretend like nobody is here and just tell them what you think about them and everything that they're doing excellent. A church minute, okay? <laughs> A church minute. <laughs> I'll go. Um, okay. Um, I want to thank you for the foundation that you provide to this family and for the security that you give us just in being here. You don't have to do anything, just in you waking up in the morning and making you come in the house and you watch us sleep when you come home, just to know that me and Harper are safe and we're provided for. You sacrifice yourself first so that her and I can have what you think we should have. Um, and I thank you for your patience because by far you are the most patient man um, <laughs> I've ever, it, like, it just, oh, yeah. <laughs> um, I love how you make me take a second and realize that outside of me, there's you. Um, and everything in my center kind of orbits around you. So I appreciate you and I love you and I, I revere you. Like I respect, I'm not afraid of you, but I respect your position in our, in our home and I appreciate it. Yeah. Yay. Okay. Miss yeah. Michelle. He was in there, but he told us to touch me. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Touch and agree. Holmes Jr., I want to thank you for being a magnificent provider. Thank you for being a fantabulous father and, of course, a magnificent husband to me. Um, I would not be the wife, woman, business owner, and mother that I am without you. And you know, I go first and foremost in the business and people see me, but they don't realize I have you behind me, pushing me to go forward, um, helping me build things, being my photographer, all of that, my marketing guy, and I don't pay you. So nope. thank you for working for free. <laughs> um, I love how you love on me and you have put us before our children, oftentimes it's easy for me to be a, a mom first, mm -hmm. but you've helped to remind me that I'm your wife first. And when they leave and go off to college, it's us. So you make me stop and spend those moments and plan the trips so that we can have our getaways. And I just thank you for putting us first Amen. and keeping Christ as the center of our marriage. So thank you. I love you. That is so sweet. Nice. Yeah. That is so sweet. Next. Okay, I got it. Okay. Timothy. <laughs> Thank you for, you asked, you wondered if you were a good husband. You are a, a great husband. You are a great provider. I feel safe with you. And I always tell you that when you, when I just want to hug you and I feel like I'm at home, that's a big deal for me. I really feel safe with you. So, you leading this family and being the provider that you are, it's very much appreciated. I know the children appreciate it, but I appreciate it as well. 
I appreciate your thoughtfulness and you putting me and our children above all else. I know that in the past that has been hard for you because like, you know, like we talked about with your family and everything like that. I appreciate you for choosing us always. Um, with the YouTube stuff, you know, you and I have had our conversations about, you know, me getting back out there to work and all of that and me beating myself up about not working and, you know, with it being beaten over my head growing up, girl, you got to work. You got to have your own, this, that, and the third. You showing me that, okay, it's, this is fine for our dynamic. You know, right now, you're patient and you are steadfast in this thing with me. And I appreciate that because you could very well, you know, like turn, you know, turn your back on it or, you know, not been okay with me doing that because, you know, to some, it might not be anything, but for me, I'm trying to, um, make some money and you know that and you see the dream, you see the vision and you always do. And so I appreciate you for always, you know, you seeing me. Yes. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> Vaughn and Bernard. You ready? Mm -hmm. It's my whole life. <laughs> <laughs> um, so right now, I really want to appreciate how we have, how you pivoted in this last year. Like with COVID and everything happening, you are the sole person here at the house making sure these kids get everything that they need while I'm able to go out and still continue to work since you have the opportunity to do that now. You try to do what I do when I'm at home. That means a lot because I, we parent totally different. I ho hover a little bit. You know, you kind of just let it go. But because it matters to me, it matters to you. You do stuff in my spirit because it matters to me. And that, that really, that says a lot. Hold on. <laughs> okay. Also, you are the most passionate person I've ever met, ever. The most charismatic person I've ever met. The biggest dreamer I've ever met. The most adventurous person I've ever met. You keep every day of my life exciting. I might not like it, but it's exciting. It's, ne it's never the same day, ever ever and that's something that i need even though i don't want to admit that i need that i like my stuff to go one way you but you change that for me and and you keep my life happy Aww. okay that was sweet okay so we did the sweet stuff let's get to the sour stuff so we're gonna do this very quickly i want each of you we're gonna start oh, oh wait oh, oh. Can we do a party break before we get to okay. the Please, I'd be so mad. Yeah. And y'all just come back and see us next time. And remember to like, share, and subscribe. Thanks for watching.